So this question comes from Guliam T. What is the most efficient way to deploy Windows operating systems on different models of computers in a Windows Server 2012 environment using Active Directory? So this is a big question that comes up, uh, especially in the enterprise world, is you have to go out there and you have to deploy lots of different operating systems, um, and how do you do it most efficiently? Realistically, uh, the first question you have to ask yourself is how big of an environment are you dealing with? Uh, if you're dealing with a real enterprise, environment, uh, 100 plus uh, computers, then you're going to be looking for an imaging solution. Honestly, though, if you're dealing with less than 100 computers in your environment, um, I have to say probably the old-fashioned just installing the operating system might be the easiest way to go. What you have to realize is whenever you create infrastructure in order to do something efficiently, right, it takes time and energy to build and maintain that infrastructure. So if you don't have enough computers to actually worry about, uh, building the infrastructure can end up being more expensive, more time-consuming, so on and so forth forth, uh, then it's really worth, right? So if you're not dealing with very many computers uh, in your environment, honestly, the good old-fashioned popping a CD in and just reinstalling the operating system may be the way to go. Uh, again, when I had my consulting company, uh, honestly, I was a fan of, of imaging software. I was a fan of ghosting software, but our our companies that we dealt with just weren't big enough. You know, if, they're, if they have 20 computers or 30 computers, dealing with an imaging solution at the end of the day just costs too much money. There, there, is, there is too much headache in, in it, right? So that's the first question you have to ask yourself, is when you're dealing with your Active Directory environment, how big is it? Um, is it really big enough that you need to go out and you need to build some kind of infrastructure in order to deal with deploying uh, operating systems? Or is it realistically so small that, eh, screw it, just go out there and install the operating system with an old-fashioned CD, right? So if you do decide that it's big enough, you know, 100 plus, uh, 100 or more computers, and then what you're going to be looking for is an imaging solution. So what, what disk imaging or what computer imaging does is it takes a snapshot. It basically takes a picture of the entire computer as it is. Uh, and then you can use that to redeploy that onto different other computers. So again, in the enterprise world, when I worked in the enterprise world, what we would do is we would set up the one standardized computer. So it would have, you know, back in the day, Windows NT 4.0. It would have Office 97 in this long time ago, uh, it would have Adobe, you would have the antivirus, it'd have all that stuff. We build one computer with all of that stuff on it, then what we do is we image that computer, we turn that into an image file, and then we put that onto a network share. We then take a boot disk, back in the old days it was a floppy disk, we go to the computer we want to re-image, we pop the boot disk in, we boot it up, we point it back to the network share, and 15 minutes later we have a fully functional working computer. Now back in the old days, the old days, 10 years ago, uh, you couldn't really uh, deploy images to different types of hardware. That, that was the, the big no-no. So that's why corporations all standardized on different sets, uh, on, on particular uh, pieces of hardware. So like, uh, so when I was working in the enterprise world, we had all Dell, Optiplex, whatever the hell they were called. Uh, and it really was. They would literally buy these Optiplex uh, computers thousands at a time because we didn't want to have to deal with lots of different types of hardware. So within our environment, I think we only had like three or four different uh, computers, like literally out of the entire environment, there were only three or four different computers. The reason was, is because we could create four images and then deploy those four images to 10,000 different systems, right? That, that's that's how it works uh, in the old days. Now in the, the, the modern world though, what is nice is you can deploy these images to different types of hardware. So you can deploy to a Dell or to an HP or to a Lenovo and it'll work okay. You just have to make sure that when you buy the imaging software that it says that you can do this. So this is very important. So uh, so it'll say something. Whenever you're going to buy uh, the, the Ghost, the imaging software that allows you to do this, it'll say somewhere in there, uh, or it should, that you can deploy to different types of hardware. If it doesn't say anywhere in there that you can deploy to different types of hardware, stay the hell away from it uh, because you will run into problems. Um, now, the standard uh, software that I think most enterprises use, or the big one that people at least know about, is Semantic Ghost. If we go over to the computer, um, I can just show you that real quick. 
Uh, so if we go over here, we can go to Symantec.com's uh, website and we can look at the Ghost Solution Suite. And so as we can see here, this is, you know, Symantec Ghost Suite, powerful computer imaging software for PC and life cycle management. Uh, Suite 2.5 is the industry's most widely used deployment management and computer imaging uh, software solution. Use Ghost proven hardware independent. See, that's what we're talking about here. Hardware independent. So you want to see something like that whenever you're buying the software. Imaging capabilities significantly accelerate day-to-day -day imaging and deployment needs. This Windows migration software can also migrate all of your client systems to the latest operating system, all from a single management console. So the other thing that you're going to be looking at uh, whenever you're buying this imaging software is there's imaging software used for small environments. Uh, basically, when you're, you're dealing with a small environment, again, you have some kind of boot disk. Uh, you may put the image onto a network share, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, but if you're looking at enterprise-type software, what's cool with the enterprise-type software is this will actually allows you to install an agent onto each individual PC and then from a single management console you can then deploy images to those PCs. So again if you're dealing with a large environment, a hundred computers, a thousand computers, you can just sit down and you can go okay Bob's computer needs to be re-imaged and you can look up Bob's computer and you can say okay Bob hyphen PC re-image now and you can do that from one console. So that's one of the things to look at. And you can go through and you can see all the different stuff. Now the thing is like if you're looking at semantic uh, the issue with this kind of stuff is it's going to cost you money. I know you are all grimace when I say this. You're like, no, Eli, it's supposed to be free, but it's going to cost you money. Uh, so if you're looking at like Ghost, uh, like something like Semantic Ghost, it's going to cost you anywhere between about $23 to $50 per license. Just how it goes. There's a lot of different stuff out there. You know, you have uh, you have Semantic Ghost. You have a Cronus uh, Snap Deploy. Uh, there's a lot of other different things. There are actually free open source versions of this kind of ghosting software out there. Um, but again, you know, it's it's open source. If it works for your environment, then it's really good. If it doesn't work for your environment, then it's going to be a real pain in the butt. Uh, realistically, like when I have looked at the ghost, uh, like the, the imaging type software that's completely open source, uh, most of that seems to be best for things like classroom environments. Uh, you know, if you have, you have a computer lab environment, so you're at a university and you've got 10 different computer labs. Each computer lab has 50 different computers in it. Uh, something like a lot of the open source uh, imaging software out there can be very useful because it does allow you to image up to hundreds or thousands of computers relatively easily. But you know what I'm saying? Within a very confined type of environment, uh, so there, there are solutions like that out there for you. You have to play with, uh, but that is basically that is how you would deploy uh, operating systems into an enterprise type environment. You would use one of these types of imaging software, your Semantic Ghost or a Cronus or you know the open source, whatever that is. The one thing that I will warn you guys about again is you just have to look at what size is your infrastructure. Seriously, right? You know, if you've got a thousand person infrastructure paying twenty three dollars a license is no big deal. If you've got a twenty person infrastructure, you know, 20 person uh, facility, uh, the, the price point doesn't necessarily work out so well. So that is what you're going to have to look at. But that's how you deploy uh, operating systems into the enterprise world. You know, just go take a look at it. Uh, lots of stuff out there. There's lots of, a lot of free trial out there. So go around, play with it. You should be good.